2 o'clock in Philadelphia. And time for the best show ever. On 97.5, the fanatic, Philadelphia. It's an afternoon. It is an afternoon here today. The best show ever here on 97.5, the fanatic, NBC Sports, Philadelphia. 610-632-0975 is the number to participate and we got to get to the word of the day right away today after this debacle. And the word of the day today is sorry. I'm sorry to each and every one of you fantastic Philadelphia fans. I'm sorry to all of you that the Phillies' best players did not come through for you. I'm sorry that you went the extra mile. You did things that you never should have done for these players this season, things that these players did not deserve, and you were not rewarded in any way, shape, or form by them on the field yes they said thank you yes they were nice to you but when you needed them when you needed them to come through for you they did nothing and i'm sorry and i'm sorry for believing and i truly believed and i apologize to all of you that one of their big time players would step up i really believed it and i was dead wrong for the second year in a row at home these guys making all this money decided to no show on offense up two one in the world series last year they got no hit and lose the series in six and because of the circumstances everyone forgave everybody forgave think about how bad that is and historically bad that is up two one at home they got no hit last year and everyone forgave and then you fast forward to now you get to game six and seven Six and seven at home, up three, two, and your five best players, Swarber, Turner, Harper, JT, and Castellanos, go three for 36 in your face as your reward for all you did for them. I'm sorry. That's why they lost. People can get into all of this body language stuff if you want. You can do that. You can go talk about what Kimbrell didn't do. You can do that. You can do whatever you want. I'm I'm just a person giving an opinion. But I will tell you this because I've been saying it the entire time. There was no path to this team winning if their stars didn't play and they didn't play. And I'm sorry to all of you. I I truly am because you guys deserved better. Are you kidding me? Trey Turner and Bryce Harper with no hits in game six and seven. Both of them. You gave that man a standing ovation to resurrect his season, and look how he repaid you. Look what he did for you. When it came time to deliver for you, he didn't show up at all. He was scared to death on that bunt. You saw it, and and I'm sorry. And the last thing I'll say before we turn it over to Ricky Bo is, is this. We've been around this city for a long time. All, all of us, we've been watching sports for a long time. And there are people out there looking to make excuses for these guys. Those people are not your friends. Those people are not being genuine. On a day like today, there is but one reaction to what happened. And if you're around people or listening to people that aren't doing that, they have a personal agenda because they like these guys. But let me ask you this. Did it look like last night, the last 18 innings at home, did they act like they liked you? Go ahead, Ricky Bob. Yeah, that's an interesting question. You're absolutely right. And, yeah, you could start off. And nobody, everybody's free game in this one. I, I don't I don't really care. The, these guys are getting paid a lot of money. The guys that are getting paid 20-plus million dollars are the guys that just didn't show up in game six. One for 17, those five guys you brought up. One for 17. Come on. One for 17. And then two for 19 in a game seven. And mind you, game seven, isn't that where the stars are supposed to shine? That's where everybody's supposed to step up and really kind of show what you're made of in those games. Guess what, people? None of the stars showed up. And I know we're going to have callers that call in and say, I told you, Boom. I told you, Stott. Yeah, well, you could tell us till you're blue in the face. What was the score of the game? 
who ended up winning the game? What was the reason they didn't win the game? And the reason flat out comes down to the big boys didn't get the job done. And to me, it, 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 you're talking about game six and seven. I could understand one game. I really could. I could understand one game, these guys going cold and not figuring it out. Bryce Harper had two pitches that he could have absolutely crushed. Instead, he just missed them. You know what I read on, on Twitter today? This is from this is from media members. Bryce Harper came within one tenth of of having another moment of bedlam what? in the bank. What in the hell does that even mean? That I mean, baseball is all about a tenth of an inch or a millimeter or this and that. It's all about that. So don't make that stupid, stupid comment on my Twitter because I don't want to hear it. The bottom line is these guys had opportunities in big situations in the last two nights and came up about as empty as you possibly could. And to me, you could blame Topper. Do what you want. I don't care. You could blame the bullpen for a couple games, maybe out in Arizona. Okay, fine. You could blame Aaron Ola for game six for all I care. But when it comes down to it, three for 36 with – those guys, the five guys that we mentioned, the five big money guys on this team, the guys that are supposed to hit the ball out of the ballpark on a general uh, basis, those guys are the ones that didn't that came up very short in game six and game seven. And to me, those were the games that counted. Yes, I know you had a 2 nothing lead. There, I, I was with everybody else. I thought this was go on cruise control. Yep. And I even said this on the show. It's fine for us to be on cruise control, but they can't. And they went on cruise control also. They had Stubbsy popping off about the pool. And, I mean, you know what? Just did, we, did you not learn anything from the series before and Orlando Arcia? Did you not learn anything? Why pop off about the pool? Why wake them up? Let them sleep through the whole playoffs for all I care. Instead, they woke up. And I will give credit where credit is due. Tori Lovello had his guys willing to play baseball. The game of baseball, not home run derby. They were out there to get big hits with two outs. They were out there to pitch the way they're told to be pitched. So you could give Lavello credit or their scouting reports credit, but the guys on the field did the job for them. The guys on the field for the Phillies did not do the job. That's why they're home. You're absolutely right. Game six and seven. I'll address two things that have been floating around that don't make any damn sense. So you go to the fourth inning, you're up at the time, and they'll say you should have you should pitch it for Rojas. I'll even go there. We've gotten to the point where you have Swarber, Turner, Harper, JT, and Castellanos on your team, and you think Pache because if you brought Jake Cave in, they're going to bring a lefty. So you're basically saying that the most important player on this team, the one that's deciding the game in the fourth inning, because none of these other guys in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, or ninth could get a run, you're saying, and not realizing you're saying, that Pache is more important than your top five players. You don't realize you're saying that, but that's what you're saying. Because if it comes down to you being having the lead in the fourth inning and not getting runs, your team's not that good. Your team's not that good. And when you're the manager, you have to believe that in the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth inning, some of your guys will show up. And instead, none of them did. And they tried giving you a gift. The Prime. seventh inning, one out. And Andrew Salfrank, the scared to double death. A. Scared to I death. have never seen somebody throw in a game that did not, <laughs> did not want to throw a ball over the plate. He had no intention of throwing a strike whatsoever i have never seen a reliever go into a game and literally think i could see what he was thinking Mm -hmm. let somebody else come in and take care of this Uh, i'm just gonna walk these guys maybe we get lucky he was dribbling he was spiking balls up at the plate (laughs) (laughs) this guy wanted no part you talk about a tight little you know what Uh he had one because that guy did not want to be in the game it showed and the phillies did not take advantage of that either go to the top of the order yeah you know what they do not a damn thing I mean, Schwarber walked, right? Uh-huh. And then it was Turner, Turner and, and Harper. And Harper. Out, out. And you know what you did? You came up empty. That's what happened in the last two games. The big, gu- the big guns came up very, very empty. I'm so sorry to all of you. And, and just a reminder, 
They scored three runs total in game six and seven at home. Three runs. And the, and the Where last, they never lose. Never lose. And your last three runs of your season came from Marsh, Bohm, and Stott. And the other thing is, do not use this. Do not use this. The, the better team lost. Do not, lo- do not use that because it's not the truth. You lost four out of five games. The last five games, you lost four of them, okay? You got beat. You just got to take that one on the chin. As fans, you know what? You think you're part of the team. You have to take that on the chin, too. Yeah, and, and I'm going to say this. You now have to treat these guys the way you did, if you're going to be fair. How are these guys different than Donovan McNabb exactly? Mm. Don McNabb got to a Super Bowl, came up short. Never, the fans never forgave him. Never. They still, they still have don't. not forgiven him. How are, how are they different than Joel Embiid? Exactly. MVP, regular. How are they different? They're not. See, we just because you like them, and I understand your feelings, but I'm saying we got to process this a little bit different. Two years in a row, at home, in big spots. Now, they added Turner, but those that core group, completely unraveled offensively at home in front of y'all two years in a row we forgave the first one i cannot forgive this one and pretend like it didn't happen i can pretend last year and go back to the nlcs and say well what about that and just forget about being no hit at home up to one a lot lot of guys in that clubhouse just kind of poo-pooed it like kind of brushed it off Mm -hmm. i will give credit to one guy it's going to be nick castellanos he took credit for how bad he was. Yep. And he, was, he wasn't happy about it. Nope. He basically said it sucked. We'll what get to he that did audio. sucked. Yep. And we'll talk about that more. Yep. We'll but there was it. a lot of washing it away, I yep. felt like. And that's not, this is not the time and the place. It, it, was, a, it was a bad two games for the Phillies. But, it, I mean, what was glaring to me was the three for 36. I, I don't think I could even – I can't walk away from that. Me neither. The other thing I want to talk about at some point, and I know we were kind of discussing it a little bit, was Topper in the second yep. inning getting people up in the bullpen. That, that kind of was a telltale sign to me. Tell you who wouldn't have done that. Charlie Manuel wouldn't have done that. Oh, hell no, because he had faith in his hitters. 610-632-0975. Word of the day is sorry. I am sorry to all the fans. You absolutely deserved better, and you did not get it. We'll discuss it all today. We'll talk to Tim McManus about the Eagles. We got Jalen uh, Hurts update. We'll talk to Jason Stark, the Hall of Famer. If he's up to it at 430 today, uh, I- I'm-, I'm telling you, I am truly sorry to all of you fans who went the extra mile this year and they then decided to just treat you bad. And, and, I, and I also have something to say to Bryce Harper coming up here on 97.5 The Fanatic, NBC Sports, Philadelphia.